My name is John Feland. I am a consulting assistant professor at Stanford University and also the CEO and founder of Argus Insights, a startup company. We do a lot with helping them uh, with rapid prototyping skills, with uh, user need finding types of skills, and we basically build the classes around that. So it's a lot of is teaching, but it's not your normal sage on stage, I am the boss. It's a lot of, okay, here's a challenge. We're going to talk a little bit about what you need to be able to do here. Let's try it out. So we end up with a much more of an interactive workshop style. It's a very different style of teaching. But we find that the students are more engaged. They have a lot more fun. We have a lot more fun. And it ties to a core tenet of how we teach design at Stanford University. Uh, we let the students. Our biggest role as teachers is to get out of their way. We had a project a couple years ago for BMW in a convertible. They wanted to reduce the wind noise because when you're going driving the, uh, the BMW uh, 5 Series at 80 miles an hour, well, you get kind of this windblown look. And it's really noisy and you can't talk to the person next to you. And the solution that the students came up with was novel and scary. Scary in the standpoint of they tried all these things to measure the flow, understand the noise, put dampers in, put funny scoops on the front to try to change the airflow, all this stuff. They built literally hundreds of prototypes, chicken wire, they made a little flow tank, and eventually they're like, I'm tired of this. They were doing a thing in the, t in the flow tank, and a flow tank is basically a, a thing of water running, and you have your little car, it's kind of like a way of visualizing the flow, and you put a little dye over here and you see how the air goes over the car, it's a little model car, it's in I have an idea. What's your idea? Stand back. Picks up a drill, drills a hole through the front windshield of the model car. Guess what? Worked. Equalized the flow all the way around. So now you had a car in this little tank that said, you're not going to have wind noise. You're not going to have hair flying over all over the place. It worked really there. What's next? Hey, professor, can we cut a hole in the car that BMW lent us for the project? What? Pause. Sure, because our job is to let them. If that meant destroying the 5 Series, that's fine. We would figure out a way to take responsibility for that. Turns out, it was perfect. It was amazing. BMW is totally excited about the results. They're just having to fight with their car designers to figure out whether or not they want to, how they want to put a hole in the front windshield. But in terms of the driving experience, it eliminates the problem. And that's a key factor in a lot of things that we try to teach these design students to do, is not just solve problems but create opportunities and eliminate the problem entirely. One of the things we do in our class at Stanford is that the first thing we ask them to do is to build a paper bicycle. And you're thinking, what, you get to go to the photocopier, pull out? This is something they have to build out of cardboard and paper that they have to ride around in a contest on campus. It teaches them a lot of things. One, they have to do this as a team, so they learn how to work with each other, which many times you, it's an army of one. What are you doing? Problem set. What are you trying to get done? My homework. Whereas this, they have to interact. Two, because it's a material they've never dealt with before, the students themselves fail in weird ways. They don't know the material, and we encourage them. We actually have them build prototypes along the way and give prizes out for the biggest catastrophic failure because they know they're safe to do that. That's where the learning takes place. We don't learn as much, especially from a design and STEM standpoint, we don't learn as much by getting the right answer. We learn more by understanding why we got the wrong answer. The more you can ground people in the reality and realize that reality is messy and give them chances to explore and explain what is it they can do, I think that's going to be a great way to kind of start letting students explore those new things. I can't draw a straight line with a ruler. If it wasn't for kind of the CAD tools out there, I would not be able to take what's in my head and make it explicit enough to share with other people. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of hand waving. Oh, and we could put a hold, and what about the, you know, with the, and the linkage, and it would be great, right? They can't see what's in my head. And I've leveraged tools over my own career to be able to take those ideas out of my head and then share them with other people and engage them in the conversation. One of the things we really try to do a lot with our students at Stanford is to help them build enough empathy for their customers and other stakeholders so they know to start using their language and catering to their strengths and points of view. Uh, and the software tools are fantastic for that. It's, uh, they become extensions of our imaginations.